I had someone ask me earlier how I set up WordPress to auto install on uh, virtual min when I create a virtual server. So I created this uh, quick little video to show how I do that. So basically you want to be on the virtual min tab and if mine looks a little different than yours that's just because you can color and stylize the, the theme here. So that's probably the only difference. So um, we've got uh, the virtual min tab. You go to system setting and then you go to server template and then you go to uh, create a template from default settings and you can see I've already got WordPress set up here. When you do that, let me show you how you set WordPress up. So you you'd basically, once you create it, you'll get something similar to this right here. And what I do is you then go to the home directory and right here you put in WP config and up here you put the folder wherever on your server you're going to put WordPress. So let me show you what is in here now and how I set this up because what we're going to do is we're going to replace certain values in the WP config file so that it automatically puts in the, um, the database name, the database username, and the database password. So that's all going to be automatically put in for you. So the person, all they have to do is just basically hit the, the final install things and it sets it all up for them. So um, let's take a look at this and we're going to go to Win um, SCP, uh, which is an SFTP program. So I can look at the server here. So here I am in the etc. WordPress folder or directory, uh, which is the same as what I had here. And then um, let me show you. So we have the public HTML folder here. And so you want to make sure that you do have that public HTML folder inside of here because it's going to take and it's going to uh, put whatever you have in here, it's going to just put it into the root uh, directory of the of that virtual server. So if you don't have it in public HTML, it's going to just install it wherever. But if you put public HTML, then it knows it needs to put it in the public HTML folder. So here is all the WordPress files. If you go to WP config, let's take a look at that. And I'll open it with Notepad here as soon as it comes up. There it is. Here's Notepad. And you can see this is what I have in here, and this is what needs to be in there to be able to replace those uh, that information. So in general, what happens is, is when you create a domain name, um, it will take the first, or when you create a virtual server with the domain name, it will take the first part of the domain name without the .com on it or .net on it or whatever you have, and it uses that as the username, and it also uh, uses that as the um, the database name. And so all you have to do is you have to tell it just user goes here, and user goes here, and pass goes here for password. And then whatever password you put in for the account, um, it will automatically put those things, it will put the password in here and then it'll create the username and it'll put those in there. So this is the exact, this is exactly how you have to have it. Don't modify this at all, but you do have to put the dollar sign, the tilde, the, or brackets, that's not a tilde, that's a bracket. So you open and close the bracket and then you put all in uppercase user and then for this one you put all uppercase password. The rest of the stuff you can leave it the way it is, but that's the only thing that you need to change and that's it. Um, then what, what you do is all you have to do is create the, you close these and all you have to do is just create a new server and um, it will, and then you, you choose WordPress or whatever name you give it um, for your um, for your default template and then it will install WordPress for you. It only takes a matter of seconds too. I mean, well, it probably takes about 10 or 15 seconds for it to do it. But it's a lot better than uploading all those files and then waiting and waiting and waiting. Now, I don't keep the latest version of WordPress on there because it's actually so easy to just hit the update button and tell it to update anyway. So I just I just basically just install it this way and then I, I go through the, the final steps. So once you create it, you just go to the domain name and then you finish up the install and then you log into the admin area and you just click click on the update button and it's pretty simple to do that. So that's how I do it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Um, if you want to learn more about this type of thing, then follow me and uh, I have a lot of other videos and I always make them as I see that, uh, that there's some type of need for them. So uh, talk to you later. Thanks.